So today's the second day of positioning numbers on a number line. Um, hopefully you're going to see more and more as this goes through how this actually involves uh, calculation and being really precise in in how we relate one number to another and thinking about those spaces. How big should this space be in comparison to that one? So the task's similar, but the depth in which you'll work, I'm sure, will grow. And uh, we'll start by looking back at that extension from yesterday. Now, I wanted to start today by going back to yesterday's extend task and just see if we can explain the thinking behind it. So you might have done this, you might not. If you haven't, that's fine. Um, but this will be a kind of hopefully a useful reminder of where we got to yesterday. So here we were thinking estimate the value of the missing numbers and we've got 0 to 16. Well, I'll tell you what I did here for my estimate and of course it is just my estimate as, as I thought well, that maybe looks about another 16 there and then another gap of that size what about there and I thought that this one looked about half of, of the gap of 16. So I did two 16s um, so that's 32 add about another 8 so I added about another 40 to 16. Now that got me to 56. Now that was my estimate. You, you might agree with that, or you might have had a slightly different one, but that was my thinking there. Now I'll show you how I went about this one. Is I thought I'm going to make a gap of about this size on this line from 0 to 90. And I thought about, a, I thought that's about the same, about there's the same, about this gap. I've, I've actually drawn it maybe slightly further along than I should have, and about there. And so I thought, so that to me, if this is 90, 0 to that, I thought that that is about a gap of 50, and that one as well. So my estimate was about 140 there. Uh, I don't know if yours is similar or slightly different. Here, 37 to 44, so this is 7. So I thought it, it looks like here about two lots of the same gap backwards. Um, so I, I went down by um, from, from there by 14, and that got me to 23. That's how I estimated there. Now this one, I, I found a tricky one. Now 18 to 63, first of all, what I worked out for the gap is I thought, well, that gap will be the same as the gap between 20 and 65. You know, that like 20 and 65 will just be ever so slightly further along that line. I found that easier to calculate with. So I knew that this gap is a gap of 45. Um, so from there I was thinking oh well let's have a look at how we could kind of break that down and that, that 45 so that if that's about there I, I thought that those two gaps are about the same so to me if this whole thing is 45 I thought that's about 20 about a 20 ish there something like that so so I went for 83 now again you, you might have had different answers but hopefully it's been really useful looking at the thought process and ways that we can estimate there so today we're going to continue this skill of positioning numbers on the number line. Uh, so today is part two and it's going to further develop that reasoning that we built yesterday. It's going to be so helpful for so many different aspects of maths as well. Um, so what I want you to do to start off with is have a look at these examples. And in this case, estimate the value of the missing numbers. Um, so we know that here, for example, the 0 and 3, so around about what can this be? And 0 to 20, so this will have to be about... Now, you won't be able to work it out exactly because it's hard to measure on that screen, but see if you can come up with what you think is a reasonable estimate. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, we're going to have a look. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in an extra something here that I, I hope you'll find helpful. Now, can you see what I've done is I've made lines of equal spaces. So this is a space of three and I've put in some more lines like that one. This is a space of 20. I've put in another space of 20 there and so on. You know, so here we've got the green ones and we've got the purple ones. Now, do those lines help? Would you change your estimates at all? Pause the video and have a think. Would you change any of the estimates that you've given? And then we'll look at what the numbers could be. OK, let's have a look now. I actually thought the first one was around about 11. I'll tell you why. So I thought that's three. Um, so six, nine. And then I thought that looks like about another two to get to 11. For the second one, well, this is 20. And this is, well, it's more than half of another 20. So it's, it's more than 30. I thought that looks about 32 there. Um, th this example I thought was 20. I thought it was one, two, three, four. It's about exactly five, lots of four there. And the last one was oh, a tricky one because, of course, we don't start at zero this time. It starts at eight. So we go to 14. Now, that is a space of six. Um, 
So we have another space of six. I, I think that's around about 20. Now, we're going to come to a problem solving task around positioning numbers on a number line that you're going to have a go at. Um, but what I want you to do first of all is this. So have a look. Calculate and compare the differences. What's the difference between these numbers, 32 and 40? What's the difference between 40 and 59? 59, 84, 84 and 100? Um, and again, that's going to be useful for the task that we're just about to come to. So pause the video and have a go at that. I wonder which ones you can work immediately and which ones need a bit more thought. Well, for me, the ones I could work out straight away really were the difference between 32 and 40. I just did one jump uh, of eight. Um, 40 and 59, again, I just thought, well, one more 10 and nine more ones. Um, then I went for the difference actually between 84 and 100, because I th thought there, this is just two steps. A jump of six to get to 90, that's how I did that. And then 10 more to get up to 100, so that's 16. 16 plus 84 is 100. Now for 59 and 84, that difference, well, actually, no, that's the same difference as the difference between 60 and 85. So I actually just used that, that it's 25 there. Y y again, you may have worked that out in different ways. Now, that's going to be useful because this is your task. You're going to draw a number line, a nice long number line between 0 and 100. Now, see if you can cut out little bits of paper with 32, 40, 59 and 84 on. And then move them around until you get the position of those numbers exactly right in comparison to one another. Think about the gaps between the numbers, the differences between the numbers, and space them out so you think you've positioned them in just the right way. So those spaces are absolutely spot on. We're going to have a look at some of the thinking behind that um, when, when you play the video again. Um, but here's your main task. Pause the video. Have a go at this one. Now, I hope that this gives you some useful guidance for how to check how you position those numbers and just some thought around how, how it can be done. Um, so so m my thinking would, would go something like this. I, I'd perhaps put 50 in as halfway, and that, that's often helpful. Um, then I'd think, well, 40 is less than halfway and 59 is more than halfway. And th the gap is almost the same between those two. Um, and so I've got to kind of almost split this section up into five pieces and think that's that's a 10 there if, we, if we're going up to 50. Um, now, if I put in the other numbers, so let's say I'm putting them in about there and I'm comparing them, I'd have a think about those lengths. And are those lengths about right in comparison with one another, those gaps? So the kind of things I might check, the red arrow or the difference between zero and 32 is double the length of this gap, 84 to 100, because this is 16 and that's 32. So actually this one should be double this one. So perhaps have a look at yours. Are you still happy with where they're positioned or would you move them slightly? How about this one? The green arrow is slightly longer than the purple arrow because 40 to 59, that's 19. Is that gap slightly bigger than this one, this gap of 16? Equally, the red arrow is actually four times longer than that blue arrow. So 0 to 32 um, compared to this gap of 8 here. So that's another thing that could be checked. Now, if I'm ordering the gaps from smallest to largest, then actually this would be the smallest gap, this gap of eight. Then I'd have this purple gap, this one of 16. Then it would be the green gap. And the orange gap would be slightly bigger. If you remember, that was a gap of 25. And then this is the one of 32. So that's another thing you could use just to check how you've positioned those numbers on those lines. It's really challenging to get it absolutely right. But I hope that's helped you just to think about some of the reasoning that can go on behind that task. For today's extend task, click on the blue link underneath the video and think with great precision. So really, positioning the numbers on the number line up for this top question is good. But what's great is the reasoning behind how you made those choices. And hopefully that's really, really developing. And, and whoever's with you will be able to really hear that. Um, and then again, on this bottom example, which arrows show the position of 240 and which arrow shows the position of 410? So I've put some examples of the reasoning that uh, would be typical at the bottom. Um, and um, it'd be fabulous to hear how you've drawn that out. I'll see you back tomorrow.